we've given you a look at billionaire lifestyles all over the world. Now it's time to see how the richest in Lebanon spend their cash. Starting off at the top, we've got Lebanon's richest man, Najib Nikati. He's worth a sizable $2.1 billion. And if you're worried that he's one of those all business, no play billionaires, don't be. He can spend with the best of them. Look no further than his lush private home in Lebanon's capital, Tripoli. By home, I don't mean house, I mean palace. It is an enormous home with an elegant, classic design right off of the coast. So prime real estate. Unfortunately, since he's the richest man and was three-time prime minister, security's a lot fiercer than in most houses. I can tell, though, that he's the kind of guy with lots of leather furniture, full libraries with impressive-looking books he likely hasn't even read, and fireplaces he can stare into pensively as he swirls a brandy and smokes a cigar. This area is known for luxury villas and houses just as big as this one. While we don't know exactly how much he paid for his, we do know enough to make a pretty good estimate. A house with a similar style and elegance goes for over $2.3 million. So his home is likely even more expensive. My guess is at least three mil. The crown jewel of his fortune is his yacht Memti. This is a beautiful 259 foot ship that is perfect if you're the richest man in your country. The price on this baby certainly backs that up. This beauty is worth over $100 million. Then there's the annual running cost of over $10 million, which pretty much requires a massive fortune to justify. The interior is just as classy as the exterior. Light exposed wood, stately living spaces, and comfy luxury bedrooms all make this the ideal getaway on the water. Then there are the extras like the beach club, gym, massage room, bar, jacuzzi, elevator, a second jacuzzi, and a helicopter platform. It's capable of holding 12 guests and 16 crew members. Obviously, this is the kind of guy who has his own private jet as well. He uses a massively expensive Falcon 8X. They are luxury machines that cost a stunning price of $58 million. The annual cost of running this is tantamount to his yacht with another $1.4 million to his expenses. Once you step inside, you realize what that money goes to. They call it the Sky Suite. It's got a cold, beautiful black and white color scheme with comfy chairs, personal entertainment systems, and office tables to keep you working while you fly. This plane is also known for a smooth, fast flight with speeds of over 547 miles per hour. Not that you'd be able to feel a single bump. That's what you pay the big bucks for. Officially, this fortune came from the family's business, the Arabian Construction Company, or ACC. It's one of the biggest construction empires in the Middle East, so that's enough to make anyone a billionaire, right? Well, maybe not. It doesn't pay to be as rich and powerful as Makati is when he's been the subject of multiple corruption charges and an illegal enrichment scam for subsidized housing loans. It was even leaked via the infamous Pandora Papers that he is one of many world leaders who is allegedly stashing money in offshore accounts. So he might just be even more the richest man in Lebanon than we thought. This storm of controversy has led to multiple protests right in front of his own home. There was even an arrest for an armed attack towards his house that luckily injured no one. Maybe advertising his wealth so publicly, if it was actually this shady, wasn't the smartest plan. The second richest man in Lebanon is Taha Makati, the older brother of Najib. He has a fortune comparable to his brother's with a net worth also in the $2 billion range. They've also got similar tastes in yachts and private planes. As far as his yacht goes, his is even bigger, bolder, and more expensive than his brother's. The Choppy Choppy is a gargantuan vessel that's worth a staggering 
$125 million. Then there's the annual cost of running the giant, which is upwards of $12 million. It weighs over 2,400 tons, stretches out over 262 feet, and can accommodate 12 guests and 33 crew members. It also features the exact same extras, including the beach club, gym, massage room, elevator, bar, and the not one but two jacuzzis. I'm pretty sure that they use the same decorator too because this yacht is loaded up with the same kind of stately furniture that goes with the exposed wood theme of the Memti. So I'd say that his yacht game is definitely better than his little brothers, though it is close. Taha is listed as owning not one, but two private jets. He's got the same kind of jet as his bro, the $58 million Falcon 8X. He's also got a Falcon 2000 that runs around $7 million. It's a very similar ride with a distinctly chic, business-like interior, a stylish exterior, and a distinctly smooth ride. It can also hit the same top speed of 547 miles per hour. Frankly, this one just seems like a better deal. While all that's impressive, there's one thing missing. His palace. While we do know that he likely has an enormous multi-million dollar pad like his bro, the only thing that we do know they have in common is their obsession with privacy. I mean, after hearing what went down at his brother's mansion, I can't really blame him for not wanting to be super public with his address. That was probably the right call. Even with the missing house, it really seems like Taha has his brother beat when it comes to spending money. Not only that, but some actually estimate his fortune is closer to three billion, meaning he may actually be the richest man in Lebanon. So you know the sibling rivalry here has got to be fierce. Well, it seems like they might work together better than you'd think. It really seems like Taha is the one largely responsible for the family's incredible wealth. He was the one who founded ACC in the first place. Then, with his bro, they founded Investcom, the M1 Group, and the Makati Foundation. I guess the family that sticks together gets filthy, stinking rich together. Boy, you can really tell these two are brothers, too. They look like they're in one of those movies or TV shows where they have the same actor play two identical characters. I'm thinking someone like Carl Reiner. The other influential family in both business and politics in the area is the Hariri family. The cream of the crop at the moment anyway is Baha Hariri. Currently, he ranks third behind the Super Makati Bros with a fortune of $2.1 billion. As far as his home goes, he has a huge estate in Switzerland in one of the nicest neighborhoods in the area. Homes in this neighborhood can go for an extreme amount of money. They can cost upwards of $20 million. His brother Saad Hariri is pretty much as successful with a net worth of around $1.3 billion. He was the Prime Minister of Lebanon from 2009 to 2011 and 2016 to 2020. He lives in a surprisingly traditional looking home, which doesn't look like a billionaire property at all. Honestly, this one might just be a few hundred thou. While that might make him sound like he's a pretty boring guy, his most publicized purchase was a $16 million gift to a South African bikini model he was reportedly having an affair with. They met at a luxury resort that he also paid for. The rumor was that they cost upwards of $3,000 a night, so this was quite the expense. He is not quite the boring billionaire he'd want you to think he is after all. Then there's the youngest child, Fad Hariri who is worth $1.2 billion, partially through inheritance and partially through successful property developments. His success doesn't just come from making big property deals though, mostly it comes from his huge passion for interior design. He was the protege of the legendary interior designer Alberto Pinto. When his mentor passed away, he basically took over from where he left off. Today he's well known for being one of the best interior designers on the planet. When he talks about his business, he talks about tracking down rare carpets at flea markets or picking up undervalued pieces of art. His keen eye and true passion for decoration seems like a perfect blend of his family's real estate interests 
and his mentor's life's work. This is exemplified in the property he took over for Alberto. The Pinto House in Paris is a lush estate that Fod has turned into his passion project. Each and every room is a masterclass in interior design. Throughout the home are dozens of statues, paintings, chandeliers, libraries, and exquisite color palettes. Homes owned and designed for this company can go for upwards of $22 million. Something tells me by the time he's finished with it, though, that $22 million will be a bit on the low side. He's also well known for designing the interiors of private jets and yachts. More of that familial experience has come in handy, I see. For Jets, he says that most of the time, billionaires aren't actually looking for the over-the-top amenities. They want something professional, comfortable, and functional. Though he has said that he worked with one client who wanted some pretty extreme features for his Boeing 747 that ended up costing the client over a million just for their services. Once you see the exposed wood furniture, the retro bedrooms, and the beautiful staircases that connect this plane that he said was much more like a house than any plane he'd ever worked on before, you really see why he gets paid a million bucks a job. I mean, private 747s go for nearly $400 million. So if you've already dropped that much cash, what's another mil? Yachts, he said, were typically where he gets his more outrageous requests from clients. Even more so than houses, because even a typical purchase for a home can be a crazy rich guy amenity for a yacht. For instance, he described the thousands of dollars and genius ingenuity that went into providing one undisclosed client's yacht with a pool table. I mean, how can you play pool, a game where even the slightest shift can be disastrous for someone's game, on a vessel that does nothing but shift as it cuts through the ocean? The pool table has to feature a gyroscopic self-leveling system. How expensive is it to just have a pool table on your yacht when your home could have one for as little as a grand? Well, Bugatti of all companies makes a carbon fiber gyroscopic pool table that costs $300,000. That's literally 300 times more expensive than putting one in a house. As far as the rest of their yacht designs go, just pretty much imagine the coolest designs you'd expect movie stars from the 60s to have in their yachts. They're chic, colorful, classy, and opulent to the max. So where does all of this success come from? They are all the sons of former Prime Minister of Lebanon, Rafik Hariri who was pretty controversial largely for his opulent wealth. Before he was prime minister, he had a modest fortune, whereas by the end of his term, he was worth a shocking $16 billion. That was a lot more impressive in 2005 as well. This led to him getting, let's say, unalived due to the constant corruption charges. I'm really starting to see some themes here. He had one of those classic mansions that looked like it came from another era altogether. It's a seven-story mansion that stretches out over 5,760 square meters in central London. The house was sold after the end of his life for $262 million. Inside, it's clear that the riches continue behind the doors as well. The home was fully stocked with expensive looking furniture and paintings in each and every room. It's likely this represented tens of millions more. No wonder his son went into interior design. As far as yachts go, he famously owned the beautiful vessel known as the Nara. It was built in 1982 and in its heyday was worth $25 million with an annual running price of $2.5 million. The family kept the yacht for quite a while before they eventually sold it to Matthew Freud, the grandson of legendary Sigmund Freud, for over $7.5 million. So clearly billionaire patriarchs in Lebanon sit their kids down and really teach them how to spend. It's just too bad they don't talk about corruption charges. Robert Mawawad is the chairman of Mawawad Jewelry, who has amassed a substantial fortune of $1.5 billion. This business has been passed through the family since the late 1800s. So as you'd expect, he's a legacy billionaire who knows how to spend big on yachts, homes, and private jets. 
that is definitely on theme. Robert is third generation Malwad to inherit the business. This led to him buying a multi-million dollar Los Angeles estate with its own bull, amazing view, and lush California palm trees. He also owns the Cedar C2 luxury yacht. It's 214 feet long with room for 24 guests and 25 crew members. It costs $40 million with an annual running cost of $4 million. Bucks. Most notably, it has a special garage for his custom-built Range Rover, which is just hideous, by the way. His private jet is a Bombardier Global Express, which can run with a price of over $20 million and has a top speed of 590 miles per hour. It is definitely the type of jet that screams, I run a massively successful diamond company. How successful exactly? Well, the company has been famous for shattering world records. It has several Guinness World Records for most expensive items of jewelry. That includes the Flower of Eternity Coffer for $3.5 million. Then there's the most expensive necklace in the world, the 407.48 carat The Incomparable, which is worth $55 million. Then they've got the most expensive handbag ever made with the 1001 Knight's Diamond Purse for $3.8 million. Once it came time to retire, he left the company in good hands. His son, Pascal, may actually live a more impressive life than his dad. He is known as the jeweler to the stars. For instance, he has designed eight diamond fantasy bras for Victoria's Secret. This includes the most expensive bra ever made, the very sexy fantasy bra that was worn by Heidi Klum herself. It alone is worth $11 million, yet another Guinness World Record for the family to rack up. He's also well known for keeping up with the Kardashians. He's worked with the likes of Kim Kardashian for her jewelry line, then he worked with Kendall and Kylie for their Metal Haven jewelry line. I guess Chloe's just not cool enough for him. Other celebs he's worked with are Heidi Klum's private line and Nicole Richie's. Basically, if you're a celebrity and you want a diamond as decadent as the one the old lady from Titanic wears, he's the guy you'd call. Lebanon actually features the most expensive hotel room in the entire world. That would be the Royal Suite of the Grand Hills Hotel, which goes for $80,000. It actually scored itself a Guinness World Record for the biggest hotel room of all time. That's because it's a truly impressive 4,131 square meters. It has seven floors and can accommodate over 10 different guests. It is surrounded by gardens on all sides and has not one but two different pools. While you'd think this ridiculous price would put people off, there's actually a two month waiting period just to book a room. So go ahead and get in line, if you have the cash that is. Lebanon might not be known for having a car company like Ferrari or Bugatti, but it has produced one of the most expensive luxury rides ever built. That would be the magnificent Leica Supersport, one that goes for $3.4 million. This majestic ride looks like a car from the future. It even has Back to the Future DeLorean doors that open up. Any billionaire will tell you that doors that go up are the most luxurious type of doors you can get. It's a real speed demon too, one that can go at speeds of over 245 miles per hour. While this car is certainly impressive, None of this explains why it's one of the most expensive rides money can buy. Well, that high price tag comes from the use of precious metals like platinum, silver, gold, and diamonds. Yet, yeah, nothing will make something worth an unnecessary fortune quite like diamonds. Lebanon has six billionaires altogether. They're actually tied with Egypt, so you know that competition is pretty neck and neck. 